Hello, my name is Tammy Davis, and I really appreciate you being here. So a little bit about autism and um, essential oils. I'm talking about that specifically today, but technically this could apply to any child taking um, some form of psychotropic medications. And by that, I'm talking about um, something for uh, depression, anxiety, ADHD, um, anything that um, influences mood and behavior. Um, so, and, and, uh, and to give you a little bit of background about me, I am a master clinical aromatherapist. So yeah, there's going to be a little bit about med, um, essential oils here, but I also have a background in pharmacology. Um, I'm also a parent of six children, four biological, two adopted, and three of them all had um, some kind of special need. My oldest one, who's currently um, 35, he'll be um, 36 this year. Although we really weren't diagnosing um, autism or anything along the spectrum when he was a young child, clearly falls on that because subsequently over the last 15 or so years, I've worked extraordinarily extensively with a lot of children and teenagers um, taking medications for one reason or another, um, and especially in the area of autism and schizophrenia. Um, and of course, other... Um, co-diagnoses that tend to go along with that. So, um, but again, the other component to this is essential oils. So I'm not here to say, get off the medications. I'm not here to cheer the medications. I'm here to say medications are a fact of life for a number of people. Um, and I learned that firsthand with the two girls that I adopted. They are biological sisters, yet both of them came into my household with an extraordinarily traumatic background and requiring um, their own cocktail of medications. And um, I say that with all due respect. I think both of them were taking four medications for the longest time. And subsequently, I have developed a method for integrating oils and medications for everyone. But I am very, very focused on our children because the number of children that I have encountered that are currently taking some very strong medications, and I was just reading a report um, that was Pardon me here. I'm going to, I think, did I turn it off? I did. <laughs> um, it's for the research units of pediatric psychopharmacology autism network. And it was a randomized clinical trial of parent training and medications. Um, they were testing children on the spectrum on, with autism spectrum disorder and um, taking things like risperidone. So it's some form of antipsychotic for autism, and this was dated in 2012. So like I said, I've worked with a lot of children that have been taking this level of medication in the Amish communities as well as the non-Amish communities. And um, it's not my place to tell anybody to come off a medication or not to take a medication, although I do understand medications, and that's really where this comes in. It's how they affect the, or how they're influencing the body chemically and how to partner that with essential oils. And I say this because um, there's a number of autism parenting magazines out there that oftentimes will talk about the use of essential oils. And there's companies promoting the use of essential oils in the realm of autism and other mental health concerns when it comes to our children. And I should say mental health and behavioral concerns. Um, and I want to be clear here, I don't see autism as a mental health issue. I just truthfully see it as an adaptive process that the body has experienced as a result of our environment. That's how I see autism. And yet there are still behavioral concerns. And then we have other that's and when then we have other people who have more of um mood disorders, emotional disturbances along with behavioral disturbances. And that was the girls that I adopted. And like I said, my son was um, um clearly he's still on the spectrum. Um but he isn't doesn't take medications. He does struggle with anxiety. He does have some, he did have a lot of behavioral issues, but we were able to um, shape that to where he is able to function in the world um, very successfully. He works with autistic children in high school, of the high school age. So um, yeah, he's doing very, very well. My daughters are actually off of medication at this point. And that's just because we began to see the changes that didn't warrant um, the use of meds any longer, and they do in, implement um, oils 
from time to time because, again, we don't live in an ideal world, which means it's our hormonal system is constantly being rocked. However, that said, um, as I mentioned, my specialty is about the integration of medications and oils um, because oils contain the constituents that are currently being studied around the world and have been being studied for hundreds of years with regards to their influence on human health. And as technology advances, we're beginning to integrate that into our drug development. Um, I've been practicing with oils for over 30 years now. I am a master clinical aromatherapist. And um, so, and if I've already said that, um, forgive me, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, I'm excited about coming out and really talking about this because I, like I said, I see things and from my viewpoint, I want these children to feel as comfortable in their skin as possible. I absolutely agree with the use of essential oils, and I do recognize the importance of medications. I'm, I'm starting a, um, a private Facebook group. It's a membership group that um, it's going to open officially on May 1st, and um, we're going to get into talking about exactly what medications do in the body and how not to duplicate the mechanism of action with oils, because the oils that I'm seeing that have been suggested, there was a, a study done by Ohio State. Unfortunately, I'm not able to access. Um, the, it was. It seems to me the doctor who led the, it was a two-year study, um, who spoke about it in September of last year, but I can't seem to locate the um, published information on it as far as her findings. But it was based off of a study of two dozen families and the application of very specific essential oils. Um a couple of things about oils. Um, number one, they contain constituents, as I said, that are often used in drug development, and they can also duplicate the mechanism of action. And um, so, therefore, if you take something like an antipsychotic that is a CNS depressant, meaning just to kind of calm that, right, for behavior, um, you can get things like lavender that are frequently promoted for calming and at the same time contains central nervous depressant constituents in it, so you would actually get what's known as an additive effect, and um, meaning it'll make them groggier and sleepier and kind of more sluggish. Um, so there's a number of reasons to be concerned about just kind of making blatant recommendations because of these types of concerns, I mean, uh, issues with taking medications, and we don't know what kind of medication the child is taking because there's a number of antipsychotics, and there's a number of antidepressants, and then there's a number of anxiolytics, and I mean, I know one boy that I was working with out of Indianapolis. At the time, he was six, and they had put him on a, on, I think it was, um, I think the name of it was 10X, but it was a blood pressure medication that um, amplified norepinephrine in the system to kind of be very calming. But at six, he was taking a blood pressure med to do that because they were, they were trying to calm him. Um, so there's a number of methods of doing this and trying to maintain behavior, and um, that might be an entirely different video, but I'll just share with you here right now. As I said, I feel like autism is an adaptive process that has occurred due to hormonal disruption from our environment, and the instability of the environment is influencing the instability of the body. And sadly, I see us as a culture trying to... Um, <sighs> control these children and these individuals and their behavior as opposed to, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay to teach them. I know I said I have a son and he's been able to self-regulate. He knows how to remove himself. He knows how to excuse himself when he needs to kind of regroup. These are the modifications that I think are more beneficial than just roping and doping them. Forgive me for saying that. I, again, I do recognize the importance if the behavior is extreme, as in the case with my girls, but eventually being able to step them down is absolutely valuable, and oils will actually help that. So you might be wondering how they help. Well, they help because they um, provide stability to the system. So we can begin to integrate oils that don't repeat the, 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 um, the pathway of the medication, but actually help to bring about some stability to the system by supporting the digestive system, by supporting the immune system, by supporting the hormonal system in a very non-invasive, um, non-controlling type of way that, again, offers stability so that you get a better benefit out of the medication and eventually they can come down on those meds. Um, 
in this particular study, uh, one year later, um, 63% of the people who were started on risperidone were still taking risperidone. And, and the sad thing about it is with medications where they are maybe sad, maybe that's not the best word, that might be an authentic way of saying, because I find it sad that for as good as these medications are, and this is another reason for introducing oils, is um, we oftentimes lead to side effects with the oils can actually help. Again, this is another reason to kind of offset those side effects as well as prevent the need for more meds. Okay, so as I mentioned, my girls were taking a cocktail, three and four medications, and they were constantly having to change them. And if you can even see in these studies that they are, you know, even a year later, they may be still taking the same antipsychotic, but they've had to take other medications to help offset any other behaviors. So this becomes more about controlling the body because we don't fully understand what's happening in the brain because, well, it's the brain and it's organic structure and everybody's wired differently. And although we were trying to pinpoint the genetics involved behind schizophrenia and autism and depression and so forth, it's a very broad research project because there's nearly 8 billion people on the planet and so how it affects one person although it may have the same name it's not the same so my goal here really is to begin to show people how we can bring bring these two worlds together meaning the uh, allopathic world the world of medications pharmaceuticals and the world of oils so that we get the best results so that our children actually don't have to experience taking more and more medications as they get older Keep in mind, my girls, when they moved in with me, when I finally adopted them, were 7 and 10. Okay, so when I'm talking about children taking these, like I said, my one client was 6. Um, I've had clients as young as 2 being placed on medications for autism. Um, it's not a judgment about the physician. I understand that, you know, when we have these situations where these children are, they won't sleep and they won't calm down in public, you know, or they have a difficult time in public because they're so high, high uh, I don't want to say calm down, but they're so sensitive. I'm not trying to be insensitive here. I'm just, you know, um, not wanting to take up too much of your time. So, but our children, these, whether they have autism or they've been diagnosed with schizophrenia or they're dealing with depression or they're dealing with anxiety, these children are very sensitive to the world around them. And that's what we're seeing. And so my goal is to help them find peace within themselves so that they can better, um, they can feel better in the world. That's how I want to say that. And, um, and so, again, I do understand that when we have children who's, be, when, like I said, when they're not sleeping and they are very hypersensitive to the world around them and they're unable to control themselves, I say maybe give them the medications and supplement it with an oil. That would be the way I would go with it if, if, if medications are, in fact, your decision. I fully support that. I understand the difficulty, and I understand, I mean, I understand the difficulty of the living with that. Um, trust me, I understand it. I mean, I had one girl who would scream all the time. I mean, that's all she did was scream. I actually finally got her attention by just whispering. But the point is, is that I do get it. So I'm not, not coming to you with insensitivity. It's um, recognizing that at some point we have to be able to at least get them to hear us. And so medications do absolutely serve. And the introduction of oils to complement that makes it easier for them to, like I said, be in their own skin and be a part of this world. And how it progresses and what's next for them will be determined um, in the future. That's not for us to be concerned about. Our goal is not to make this happen so they can come off the medication. Our goal is to bring peace in here so that they can be comfortable around the rest of us. All right. I hope that makes sense. Please let me know if you have any questions. A uh, link to email me is in the box below as well as to uh, learn more about balanced wellness. All right. Thanks, you guys.